What up crowdfunders, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about fundraising, raising money, how do you incorporate crowdfunding into your business or your nonprofit. And today, we're getting into some of the differences between a for-profit company and a not-for-profit company. I first wanna get into some of these major differences between the for-profit and not-for-profit organization and then get into which one is the best for you and which one should you start. Let's first talk about goals. So with a for-profit company, your goal is basically to make profit and to distribute that to the shareholders, which is basically a fancy word for the people that own the company. With a not-for-profit, you have more of a social good mission. So you're trying to do good in the actual community. You're trying to do good in the world. Um, you've identified a need and you wanna improve that. And for whatever reason, existing governmental organizations or companies out there are not addressing that need. This is a very important difference because this actually guides a lot of your strategies going forward and also a lot of the laws related to starting a nonprofit or starting a for-profit company. So for example, since a for-profit company, their goal Goal is to appease their shareholders and to distribute profit to their shareholders, the people that own the company. Therefore, they are going to be taxed on those profits. In addition, by being a for-profit company, you do have the ability to actually pay out money to the people that own the company. With a not-for-profit, naturally in the name, you can't pay out money to people that own the actual non-profit. Instead, you can only have expenses that are related to actually fulfilling this core mission that your non-profit has or the core or good that you're trying to basically put into the world. You can pay you know, salaries, you can pay different expenses related to accomplishing this mission, but you can't actually pay out profit. So I'll get a little bit more into that in just a second, but the other distinction here comes with taxes. So a for-profit company must pay taxes on profits. They must pay taxes on profits, and that goes to the government, goes to the federal, um, state, local government. These taxes are basically a way of saying, we, we created this value which we're now um, enjoying under the United States, if you're in the United States, or under whatever municipality you're in. Um, therefore, we have to pay money to the government, which then sponsors different programs, maybe trash collection you know, in a local area, whatever. You're basically paying money as a result of using the system to your benefit. Since a not-for-profit does not actually distribute profits to the shareholders, they don't have to pay any of those normal types of taxes. And in addition, as a result of giving money or donating money, this is actually a tax write-off. Another thing that comes with this is when you're actually donating money to a non-profit organization, you as the donor can write that off of your taxes if it is a 501c3 organization, an official nonprofit. So basically, there are no taxes in the traditional sense, and also they are allowed to solicit donations which are um, have the ability to, to write off with taxes. You can write off. So the cool thing I think also about this is that the, the sort of the idea behind this is if you are working to improve your local community or doing a social good, you then shouldn't be um, under obligation to pay taxes. In addition, if you don't have any profits related to your efforts, if all the money is going back into fueling this overall mission which is needed in society, then you should not have to pay profit or ta taxes on that. The third difference when it comes to nonprofits versus for-profit companies are the way that revenue is generated. So revenue is what you're taking in for selling goods and services, or in the case of a nonprofit, also could be donations. A for-profit company can't, you know, they're basically limited to selling uh, services and products. And these products can be in the open marketplace. People can pay money, you know, they pay a hundred bucks and maybe that, that product has a profit margin of like 40%. So 40% then is retained. That can be either put back into the business or that, that percentage can be distributed to the shareholders. The main way that a for-profit company generates revenue is with services and with products. Could be digital products or could be uh, physical products. Now here's where it gets like a little bit tricky. A non-for-profit, a non-profit can also generate revenue from services and also from products. However, there can't be any profit that comes from these products and is distributed to any kind of like shareholders or people who own you know, the nonprofit. Um, instead, this has to go back into the business in terms of paying people's salaries and paying um, equipment costs or paying anything that kind of helps the overall mission of the nonprofit. In addition, they have the ability to increase revenue through donations. So they can actually solicit donations 
um, from their core donor base, from people out there online, um, to people who want to help out with the cause, they can solicit donations, and those donations then they have to be put back into forwarding this overall mission or vision of the nonprofit. The next big distinction that I see when it, it comes to sort of the assets or the way that wealth is created. So stay with me here. If you build up a for-profit company, you start your own business online, you start your own business, you get investors, um, that business can then do an IPO. You can become the next Facebook, the next Google, or you can sell that business. You can sell a business to another private company or to a public company. You can cash out if you will. You can have a cash windfall. You basically are building an asset, something that can be sold at a future date, and you own the rights to that asset. And when that's sold, you then get money from that. The same thing does not happen with a not-for-profit because no one really owns a not-for-profit. You can't buy or sell a non-profit. You can merge with other non-profits, but you can't actually do that in a traditional like capitalistic sense of the way. So kind of like the way that I think about this, you know, there's a, a strict term for this. A for-profit is basically an asset. A not-for-profit is more of a public good. Um, that's kind of how I think about it. It's basically a organization that's there that has a mission that is self-sustaining, hopefully, but that can't be acquired or sold in like the, the capitalistic sense of the word. The next major difference that I want to get into is um, how you actually start one of these organizations, and it's more from the framework of um, buyer and seller, or the demand and supply. What is the difference there when it goes into the mindset of starting one of these organizations? So let's first start actually with the nonprofit. The nonprofit is there to, to service a mission that a existing government organization or other for-profit companies do not meet. So the first thing that you have here is you have a core demographic that has some kind of a need. So maybe kids aren't getting um, the schooling or the education that they need. Maybe there's some kind of medical need or something like that. There's some kind of core demographic that has a need. And then you basically are coming in with a solution. Now this solution is not currently out there in the marketplace. Um, those kids aren't getting the education. They don't have access to the books or the training or they don't have whatever it is that they need, um, good mentors or role models in order to um, persist, in order to grow in, in their life and to have career development, all of that kind of stuff. The nonprofit has identified the core need or demographic they then have the solution, and what they then do is they fundraise from people who care, basically. So we'll say fundraise from people who care. Um, they are essentially the intermediary. They're going for, to, out there to, in the world to people that care. They're telling the story. They're showing these people who ha really have this, this need to learn more or to get better access to education. They're telling the story. They're doing the marketing. They're soliciting donations. They're doing fundraising galas. They're doing events. They're doing annual giving campaigns. They're basically raising money from this one group that cares about seeing that need or seeing that problem solved in society. And then they're taking that money and then they're funneling that into this core demographic through their solution in order to help those people. So the nonprofit kind of acts as a intermediary um, between these two different groups, the people that are suffering or that have a need and the people that care about helping or seeing that need in some way alleviated. Now here's the difference between with a for-profit. With a for-profit company, there's still this search out there where you're trying to identify a need in the marketplace. I need to learn how to get fit. Um, I need a new device that's gonna help me film better or more accurate um, video footage with my camera. I need a selfie stick. You know, I need something. I have a problem that must be solved. The, the goal of the for-profit company is to identify problems or needs in the marketplace and also um, obviously with like competition understanding the various other products that are out there to try and solve or meet those needs. The company then creates the solution or the product and it's sort of their job or their onus to show how this solution is better than anything else out there on the market. And if they do, the people that suffer from the problem or the people that suffer from the need will actually pay the company money for them to solve this problem. So let's say, yeah, I actually, I need a selfie stick because my, my hand hurts from holding my camera all day long when I'm taking photos or I'm being a tourist around New York City. I need a selfie stick. I'm gonna pay you 20 bucks because I need this problem solved. I know then it's gonna be a lot easier to do that. This in the bare bones is how a business functions. The people that suffer from the problem are usually the ones who are paying for the solution. When it comes to a nonprofit, typically the people that suffer from the problem are not the ones that are paying for the solution. It's the people that they're raising money from, the nonprofit is raising money from. Now, this is not obviously, 
is a very simplified model. Let me stress that. Uh, a company that's a little bit more complex, like Facebook, they obviously are, are you know, solving a need or a problem for their users, and in addition for their advertisers. So they have multiple parties at play, and the advertisers are actually the ones that are fueling the site, and they're then allowing them to service um, this, this group of customers in terms of having a public free space where you can put in your information, you can connect with your friends and family. This model also gets a little bit more complicated when you're raising money from investors, because if you're raising money from a venture capitalist or an angel investor or with crowdfunding, you then have a whole other group of people that are giving you money in order to create the solution and then in order to service the need, and then those people then pay back money, and hopefully over time, those venture capitalists or those investors get a good ROI on their investment. Over my career, I've learned a lot about for-profit companies, you know, helping people launch campaigns on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, helping them grow online stores. Um, I also have learned a lot about nonprofits, writing the book, Nonprofit Crowdfunding Explained, working with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, helping a lot of companies in that way with donations and, and sharing their message, etc. So I've learned a lot about these two different groups. I think for me, one of the most surprising aspects of this is that a not-for-profit could actually pay employees a salary. You could actually have a whole team behind you, a really big nonprofit organization with large expenses, and they could be paying that, and they can do this through soliciting donations, they can do this through providing services and these different things. They just have to not make a profit. Both of these organizational types have a mission, they have something that they're trying to do. It's just a little bit different in the way that IP works, in the way that taxes work, um, in the way that you can actually distribute profit, the way you can build wealth. So I guess the good question to ask you is, what is it that you wanna accomplish? What are you trying to use this organization to do? And where is your confusion? Leave it in the comments down below. I invite you to dive into my YouTube channel, get into some of the other videos I have out there on how to raise money for your organization using crowdfunding, how to raise money for a cause using crowdfunding, how to start an online business. We talk about all of that on this channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Salvador Brigman. Give me a thumbs up if you did like this video and I will see you next time.